1950, there are 10 billion ounces of above ground available bullion inventories, giving the world 140 months of silver supply. By 1970, it shrank to 70 months. 1990, 55 months. 2010, 11 months at just over 700 million ounces of above ground available silver. A collapse of 93% in global inventory. Yet demand continues to surge. Despite all the new silver mine, the world has consumed so much silver in the last 50 years. The last time above ground inventory was this low was 1300 AD, and the consumption and uses for silver is accelerating. In 1999, 100 million ounces of silver went to electronics. In 2011, it is projected to reach 250 million ounces. However, the new uses for silver are ever expanding. For example, in 1999, the amount of silver used for solar panels was so small, there wasn't even an official reporting of the number. In 2010, it was 75 million ounces. And by 2014, it is projected to reach 130 million ounces. Investment demand is also on the rise. In fact, in 2010, the U.S. Mint sold 35 million American Eagles, which means that the 4.8% of silver mined in 2010 went to create a single coin. The odds of these coins being melted down are next to zero, as this is the most popular coin in the world. So it is safe to say the silver that was used for these coins is just as gone as the 50 cents worth of silver in your cell phone. As the Fed prints and investors begin to flood into the money of gentlemen, relative to the amount of fiat currency, there isn't a lot of silver to go around. New mines in the U.S. and Canada take 10 years from the time of discovery until they can produce a single ounce of silver. In Nevada, the silver state, there is solid evidence that mine production has already peaked. Nevada produced 25 million ounces of silver in 1997. In 2010, production had collapsed by just over 70% to 7.3 million ounces. According to the research done by SRS Rocco, report titled Peak Silver, of the top eight silver producing states in the U.S., all have peaked in production, despite all of our new technologies that have helped us extract the metal. In fact, according to the USGS, the ore grades have collapsed 95% in the past 75 years in the U.S. To put it simply, it is getting harder and harder to mine silver, taking more time and energy, both human and liquid, in order to get silver out of the ground. Right now, for every 10 ounces of silver mined, the world is mining one ounce of gold. Gold, however, is trading 53 times higher than silver. The opportunity in silver is epic. The paper price suppression has made silver the biggest buy ever. Silver, a physical commodity that is needed for everyday uses, is being traded on the COMEX at least 100 times more than the actual physical supply. This has made it possible for a billion ounces of silver to be traded every single day in the paper markets. The supply of silver has been distorted and investors have been deceived into selling silver for $30 per ounce. FutureMoneyTrends.com believes the suppression has become a gift for the average person to finally strike back at the heart of the machine that has benefited from the fiat currency system. Due to industrial uses, FutureMoneyTrends.com is projecting a physical silver shortage by 2020. Yet with the current system melting up, we believe we could see a shortage as soon as 2015 as investors flood into the $35 billion silver market. If silver during the Euro crisis had the same initial reaction as it did in 2008 with a sharp decline, we believe that due to the nature of the crisis, 2012 being a currency crisis, the demand for physical silver would be overwhelming on a global scale. As investors rush into the physical metal, we could very well see some type of silver shortage, or at the very least major delays on delivery if silver was to fall back below $24 an ounce. We are not saying that it is, but if silver was to pull back, all hell could break loose in the physical market.